making a Stuart model steam plant part 89, soldering the electrical connectors to the lamps. I show a useful tip for doing that. Connecting the lamps to the dynamo and testing them by running the Stuart S50 engine. These two very nice lamp standards that I'm using on this plant use the main outside body of the lamp as the negative side and the central wire as the positive. And because I'm using LED warm white lamps, polarity is important. It wouldn't matter if I was using thermal bulbs. The first thing to show in this episode is a top tip, because it's top tip time. When I was 16, I became an electrical engineering apprentice, but that didn't last long. I've always been into electronics and soldering, but I don't put much about it in these videos because that's not really what I do. But in this case, in this episode, there is some soldering. And this is a top tip. Drill a hole in a piece of wood to support the electrical terminal that you're soldering. I thank the viewer who kindly wrote in to tell me to do this. In 1987, three years after I started my recording studio, I ordered a very large, very good quality sound mixer from a local supplier, a company by the name of MJ Electronics, run by a friend of mine called John Varley. Once I ordered the mixer, I asked John if I could do some of the wiring, and I was pleased when he said, you can do all of it. And for what seemed an eternity, I went into the factory two days a week and wired in six and a half miles of balance line cabling. And I wasn't exaggerating, there were six and a half miles of cable in this mixer, quite a lot. Not just to the individual channels, but to the patch bay, which really was quite large. I thank the viewer for sending me this tip that I've used for many years, and here it is in video form. This one's a bit different, I'm drilling two larger holes in the end of this piece of mahogany, and these are going to support the nuts that I'm going to solder some wires onto. And here they are, two 4BA brass nuts. Once wired, each of these nuts will be bolted through the main base of the lamps. I've plugged in the soldering iron and I've switched it on. All I'm doing at the moment is waiting for it to reach its temperature. It's only a 25 watt soldering iron, which is ideal for small cables. If you use a large soldering iron, you're likely to melt the insulation. The first part of the job, as always, is to tin the ends of the pieces of wire. The process is, apply a little solder to the tip, hold the tip against the wire, and then, once the wire gets up to the right temperature, apply the solder to the junction between the tip and the wire. That way, you get a very good joint. In this clip, I'm showing soldering the other ends of the pieces of wire to each of these nuts. The nuts take a little longer to get hot because they're physically larger. This process is known as tinning. The parts that you're soldering need to be at the correct temperature. If the parts are not hot enough, then there's a problem. You will get what's known as a dry joint. You can usually see when it's like this because the surface is dull. But if you look at these, the surface of the solder is very shiny. I'm holding the wire in position on the nut and the solder on the wire and the solder on the nut flows together. It's not a dry joint, it's still nice and shiny. I repeat the process for the other nut. Once both of the wires were firmly soldered to the nuts, I just nipped off the end of the wire using a pair of cutters. The next part of the job involves cutting the black wires to the correct length and removing the insulation and tinning the ends as shown previously. Once again, the small hole in the piece of mahogany comes in useful. I need to solder these wires to the parts that fit in the plug. By the way, it's important to use pieces of wood for this, not pieces of metal. If you use a hole in a piece of metal, it will conduct the heat away from the joint. And that's something that you definitely do not want. In this clip, I'm closing the ends of these small sockets over the insulation as shown. Now the parts are thoroughly cooled, I can fit them into the plastic holders. Not forgetting to observe the polarity. The square hole is the negative, the round hole is the positive. It's easy to get confused if you look at the connector from the wrong end. Both of these holes are square. This is the end that the wire goes into. I need to tin the positive wire. Before doing this though, I cleaned it up with a piece of Scotch-Brite because it was quite tarnished. These lamps are very old, but very good. 
Here you can clearly see the principle. I line up the connector with the wire and solder it in the normal way. Then I close the tabs over the insulation. To finish the job, the black wires that are soldered to two nuts need to be fitted to the individual lamps. But before I do that, I'm cleaning up the area using a grinder so I get metal to metal contact. I definitely need to ensure metal to metal contact in this area. Now I'm tightening a bolt into the nut. For this I'm using a socket driver and then on the other end I'm using a small 4BA spanner. I decided to leave the bolt long and drill out the hole on the baseboard that will show the owner when he assembles it what goes where. These brass hexagon bolts are a bit too short. If I can't get any longer ones, I may use studs in this area. For the three bolts that hold the standards in place at each side, I'm filing the ends of them to a blunt point in the lathe. Now for something completely different, I'm just checking the quality of the joint on the leather. I think the joint is OK, but as a belt and braces approach, I'm applying some cyanoacrylate to the joint as well. And as we all know, cyanoacrylate is super glue. In this clip, I'm holding the belt between my finger and thumb until the cyanoacrylate cures. Here's the plant connected to the compressed air line, ready to test the lamps. In the next episode, I'm going to have a quick look at the S50 and advance the timing to stop the ticking which is very noticeable at very low speeds, which also makes the lamps flash. The ticking is less noticeable at the speed that the S50 needs to run at to successfully generate enough electricity for the lamps. I'm just going to remove a bit of metal from each end of the slide valve, which should make it uncover the ports at the right time. After quietening the S50, all I need to do then is dismantle the plant and then very carefully and very securely pack the components into three packages, which I will then post to California. That's the plan. And that is the end of this episode. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.